Hello, everyone, and welcome to Audience Network webinar. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Orly, and I'm Central East European Manager at Audience Network. I'm a big fan of games and have been playing computer games since I was five. This hasn't changed much over the years, but the platforms that I use to play change significantly. Today with us in the room, we also have Anshuman Agarwal, who is the PMM of Audience Network. And he will be answer, answering questions during the quick Q&A, so please have them ready with you. Today, we will focus on gaming formats that drive scale, retention, and sustainable business model. I'll be walking you through some of the latest research findings, publisher success stories, and best practices for implementing rewarded video. This year, Facebook commissioned a new research which was conducted by Walnut Unlimited. In this research, 173 pubs across EMEA, APAC, and US were surveyed. Findings show that a majority of game developers believe that ads can actually improve player retention without distracting from the user experience. So what do we know about rewarded video? Rewarded video is an ad type typically found in mobile games, which gives players the choice to watch an ad in an exchange for a reward within the game. Players like gaining additional benefits in the game without having to wait or pay every single time. And this course of action reflects well on both the app and the advertisers. Users are not rewarded for clicks or installs, but only for completing video views, which keeps them in the game for a longer period of time. Let's zoom out a little bit and look at the evolution of the market overall in the past two years. One of the things that clearly stands out to us in this is that rewarded video has grown nearly three times as faster than the rest of the formats available in the market. It may sound a bit extreme, but this format is bringing the skeptic into the fold and truly helping open up the gaming vertical to ads monetization. Publishers who were conservative until now and never implemented ads in their game, but relied only on in-app purchase has already made a transition in their mind and in the game towards rewarded video and are seeing new revenue streams for their game. Thanks to this, mobile gaming, a format of mainstream media today, has become a dynamic ecosystem for advertisers, developers, and gamers. That's why we believe that it's more important than ever to keep a close eye on the value being delivered to each of the um, stakeholders. And this is what I want to talk to you through today. Another surprising factor is that we see the ad time affecting users' rating in the App Store. We see better ratings for games that use advertising, which encourages more choice over engagement and doesn't disrupt the user flow in the game like pop-up ads and intrusive interstitials. Some game designs uh, lend themselves more naturally to particular ad types than others, but we saw a consistent uplift in user experience across genres which using rewarded video. This was driven by use of ads that allow gamers more choice to engage a consistent 10 to 15% uplift in five-star rating across all types of games. It is important that ads are implemented to give a genuine choice within the game and not this guide in a way that tricks the players into clicking on them. If a gamer feels tricked, it undermines their trust in the game and their likelihood to continue playing as there are many alternatives in the App Store. Rewarded video benefits each audience. The players have a choice to opt in and get value in return for their time and attention. The developer increases user engagement, retention, and ultimately achieves greater revenue results from this ad monetization approach. And obviously, the advertisers get quality engagement and achieve positive brand association 
from this pleasing ad format. How is audience network different from other demand partners? First, Facebook has global diversified demand pool of advertisers. We have over 5 million advertisers buying on our platform. This is global quality demand, ensuring that our gamers see different ads and continue to stay engaged in the game. One of the most frustrating things for users is to constantly watch the same ad, um, which they are not relating to. Second, our people-based targeting will help you connect people with brands that matter most to them. Through full-screen user-centric experience, rewarded video drives positive reinforcement by awarding the user additional benefits in the game without having to wait or, or pay. Third, better ad experience for each user. Audience Network creates enhanced user experience by giving an opportunity to opt into the ad without forcibly disrupting their user journey. And lastly, but most importantly, increase the yield for you, our publishers. A compelling demand source and a high desirable audience miss, means less remnant inventory for you, longer interaction, and ultimately the possibility to greater CPMs. So who has already seen success with rewarded video? One of our publishers, Outplay, had a big challenge with a high proportion of their customers never making an enough purchase in the free games that they had. They looked to boost their monetization within, with in-app ads that were less disruptive to the players, but experienced um, really good statistics. The solution was that Outplay was quick to the market and implemented rewarded video when it first came available. Rewarded video offered increased monetization while improving player experience. As a result, they've seen significant improvement and sustainable performance in several titles. In some cases, average ECPMs in tier one countries has improved by as much as 250%. This growth has supported the developer with their existing games, with user acquisition activity, and investment in building new quality games for the future. Another big publisher of us, Colibri Games, had a challenge on the hunt for a new ad monetization strategy to increase fill and provide more competitive CPMs, while also providing access to high quality ads that align with their brand value. The solution was that Colibri implemented rewarded video in two of their games, Idle Minor Tycoon and Idle Factory Tycoon. Rewarded video provided a natural fit for the user experience by providing the opportunity to reward a player for returning to the game, as well as helping them earn more rewards for future play. In a result, Colibri doubled its ad revenues after implementing rewarded video. This has helped the business to grow significantly while positively affecting their user LTV. This success has also opened up a new publishing program to help other indie developers. Next, we will see and hear a snippet firsthand from Colibri business development lead, Nathan Barker, taken from our video case study, which is available on Facebook Audience Network website. Customers can't get enough of rewarded video ads. They love the rewards, and we know from the performance of the ads that they're resonating extremely well with the players. Facebook's audience network has been instrumental in growing our revenue and growing our business. Since implementing the audience network, we've doubled our revenue, and the CPMs that we get from Facebook are above and beyond all of the other networks. Here are the things that you really must consider when implementing rewarded video in your games. Your app has an in-game economy like virtual currencies or specific rewards to progress in the game. Make sure the users know where to find the reward video, but don't force the player to click and view the, the, the ad itself. 
always include an opt out button for the users in case they don't want to view the video until the end. But make sure to tell them that they will not receive the reward. Listen to your players' feedback by monitoring retention metrics, session lengths, and App Store reviews. Create an A-B test between different entry points of rewarded video placement. For example, test five different placements and choose the three best performing ones. And lastly, segment your audience by understanding payers, paying versus non-paying users and treat them differently with the amounts of ads that are shown and the frequency cap. I will now walk you through different ad placement strategies and cases in which they work best. Let's start from left to right. Daily reward multiplier. This reward gives uh, for the players um, that are returning to the game and it provides multiplying the bonuses. It allows for monetizing almost each and every active user. This helps with retention by providing incentive to return to the game. In-game store. This approach targets for non-paying players and introduced the idea of IAP value natural addition to existing IAP users interface and should be capped to avoid cannibalizing your IAP revenues. Home screen. High visibility, reach and entry point. Typically, it leads to high volumes introducing to value exchange in rewarded video. Out of lives option. This is a very popular entry point and it offers high temptation, temptation factor. Number of times this is offered during the session should also be capped. Boost rewards. This implementation offers pre or mid level power ups. It helps player progress through the game more quickly. Special boosters can be offered right before a challenging level. End of game multiplier. This gives the opportunity to multiply, uh, to multiply end of level by watching video ads. It can also be used to offer hints to achieve a better score or rating. Decrease wait time. Allow players to bypass or reduce wait time. It can be used for new life, new levels, or unblocking a game feature. And lastly, in game hints. This implementation offers in-game hints, clues, in return for watching a video ad. It can lead to really high retention by helping users move on from one level to the other when they are stuck. Lastly, we have a really big announcement to make, and we wanted to finish this webinar with a surprise for all of you. Rewarded video is now open to all of the gaming apps. Look out to access it in your monetization manager dashboard. Plan ahead for rewarded video when building your app and you will see far greater results when in implementing ads as part of the game flow. We will now be moving to Q&A and I'm looking forward for all of your questions. So our first question comes from George. Um, does audience network see different ECPM performance based on different implementations? What is the most recommended implementation? In my opinion, the most recommended implementation is really whatever suits in the game flow. So I wouldn't look at the best ECPMs, but rather what in the game flow makes sense. If it's a really hard game and usually users are out of life really quickly, then a out of uh, out of life implementation sounds better. Um, but if the users need a lot of help, like hints, then that would be the preferred one. So to conclude that, it will be any implementation that has higher engagement level. Uh, the next one is from Iren. Uh, what would be the best examples for 
lifestyle apps? Uh, that's a good question. So we do have additional formats like interstitial, native, um, carousel types. Uh, it really depends what type of lifestyle apps. If we're talking about fitness apps, uh, you can think about unlocking premium uh, workouts with rewarded video. Or if you have a feed inside the lifestyle app, then probably native format will be, will be the most suitable. Uh, the next one is from uh, Roman, who's asking, when should I start thinking about ad placement in the design process? Anshuman, would you like to, to help us here? Um, so there are some formats which are easier to implement late in the day, like interstitials or banners. But when it comes to rewarded video, we recommend to think about rewarded video as you're thinking about your game, because the rewarded video is best done when you plan ahead of time as you're thinking about your game flow, how to drive users uh, towards more, more spend, more time, more spending on the game. We have another question from Herv who asks, how does ECPM for awarded video compare between iOS and Android in US and other countries? So the way Facebook and audience network um, think about ECPMs is actually based on engagement. So different publishers in the same market with the same operating system can have completely different ACPMs and it's really based on the engagement of the users and the value of the users to the advertisers. Um, typically that is the difference that we see rather than thinking that one OS is more lucrative than the other. Voltaire asks us, how about rewarded ads for non-gaming apps like additional content? Um, additional content will be unlocked if you watch a video. Uh, I can take that. So this yeah. is something that we are testing and trialing. Um, so please watch out for this space. We have a very small set of publishers that we are working with outside gaming. Uh, we want to make sure that this format, as you said, has valid use case um, and works well with the economy of the apps uh, as well as user experience. For now, it's not scaled out to non-gaming apps, um, but we are definitely working towards it. Thank you, Anjorn. Um, Madhu asks, how could we choose the ads to show to our players? So yeah, Anjorn, I think. Yeah, the so, controls. Again, one of the controls that we have uh, tested out is building a feature where the user can actually choose between two or three ads to choose from. Um, by default, before we launched this, uh, the ad itself was chosen by our algorithms, but based on this control, the user can select between three ads uh, and they can w watch whichever one they want. Thank you, Anshuman. Jess Winder asks us, why do games fail quality check? What are the various possibilities except bad user experience? This is in context of rewarded video. Um, I think a couple of things to think about when we think about quality checks is basically, we are thinking about three players in the ecosystem. Player number one being the user, the second component being the publisher, and the third component being the advertiser. So overall, for us, quality is balancing the experience of all these three parties. When it comes to rewarded video itself, there are some specific guidelines that we want to make sure um, are followed, which are part of the rewarded video in terms of uh, service, such as the rewarded video should be discoverable but not forced. Users should see a button where they can opt into the rewarded video. Um, the second key component is that users should actually get a valid reward at the end of 
the the reward video and if these things are okay then it should not be a problem to to work with reward video thank you anshuman um boris is asking us do you see many core games implementing ads how do gamers core gamers feel about that so we do see in the industry the transition of uh, core gamers uh, into implementing ads. Um, usually, this is only with uh, this is only done with rewarded video and not other formats, where publishers are giving additional value to their gamer to their gamers. Um, I do have a very funny anecdote uh, from a big uh, core gaming publisher that mentioned that when they had once an issue with uh, with ads and they shut it down for 48 hours from their apps they received more than 100 complaints and messages from their gamers asking um, to get the rewarded video option back in their game so i'm guessing that also gamers and players uh, are quite fond of uh, of this option alex is asking us hi guys uh, what the general distribution of impressions when I launch Facebook, audience network, uh, rewarded video, what does it mean? Facebook. Alex, uh, welcome back to you. If you can um, actually let us know what you mean by this question or, or formulate it a bit differently, that would be great. Uh, there's another question here from Daniel, which is, what is the most effective monetization strategy for a game? Is it ads? Is it in-app purchases? And does ads cannibalize in-app purchases or not? Um, what we've seen from the research that was done recently by the third party um, that Facebook commissioned, we see that actually most developers feel that a combination of in-app purchases and ads is the most effective monetization strategy and that many of them believe that rewarded video actually drives in-app purchases rather than cannibalize in-app purchases if it is done well. Thank you, Anshuan. There is one other question from Tom, which is how do I get access to rewarded video on monetization manager? Do I need to do any SDK updates? Uh, etc. So I would say two things. I think we always recommend using our latest SDKs because our latest SDKs have all the new features, um, performance improvements, stability improvements, etc. But to, to enable rewarded video, you can just go into monetization manager and create a new placement, which is a rewarded video placement. There isn't anything complex that you need to do for your gaming apps. Thanks, Sanjuman. We have uh, five more minutes left for our webinar. So if you guys have additional questions, please write them to us. Uh, we're waiting for you. We have here another question from Tomas. Um, what about other formats for gaming apps, like banners or interstitials? Do you recommend to implement them? So. Our recommendation is always to think about the user flow and what fits for your application. With rewarded video, we just see higher eCPMs and higher retention and the feedback from the users is much better. Having said that, we do see plenty of hyper casual publishers implementing interstitials and even banners. Um, the engagement on the interstitial looks quite good, and we're working hardly at Audience Network to also improve our interstitial formats by adding playables in them or adding rewarded video option in the interstitial format. So please also look out for this type of formats. Okay, hi Roman. Um, how do you recommend to segment audience based on the retention and engagement? So, um, my feedback usually to publishers is um, to always do A-B testing. 
um, when you first launch your application, check how users uh, engage with it. If, uh, if you need day seven or day 14 or day 30 um, to, to understand if this user is going to be a paid user or a non-paying user. And based on this uh, engagement, I would segment uh, uh, the, the different users and show them ads differently. So for instance, for a not paying user, you can maximize uh, your revenues from him by increasing the frequency cap of the ads. And for paying users, you might only provide them with uh, one rewarded video slot uh, rather than three options, for instance, or provide just different amount of coins or different amount of reward uh, based on the different users. Um, we have here a new question from Jess Winder. We're following all the guide guidelines related to rewarded video, but still our games are failing quality check. Is there anyone from your team who can help us with proper feedback? Right now, we're just told that some of the placements are failing quality check. We're not getting accurate feedback, which will help us to fix the issue. I think in this situation, because it's a very specific situation, just with that we can't answer more broadly, would be to contact us with the details uh, of what you're facing. Um, and the contact form is available in, in monetization manager for help uh, and we can come back to you with with something more specific thank you Anshuman. um i would also recommend uh, to watch our webinars because we already had a webinar related to quality um, of the apps and there is a there is a form in our wiki so there there are plenty of recommendations in our wiki uh, which you can also follow up with thank you for joining us today uh, you will receive the presentation in the follow-up email we'll also include a survey and we would love your feedback so please do fill that out have a great day thank you guys